Hey guys, welcome in to the Outspoken Network here, a sportscast. It's your week five takeaways. We got your host, Brian and Craig, on, and we got a couple special guests today. We got Paul from Bear Ski Films, and we've got David from Bear Ski Films as well. His first time on the show. Welcome in, guys. Yeah, thank you for uh, having us both on. Um, you know, we're big Bears fans, and we get all of our Bears conversation out on our podcast, but we're also big NFL fans. So in our private conversations, we always talk NFL talk, and it's nice to just be able to, to you know, join you guys and chat about the league. So, thank All right. You. There's a lot to get into, a lot to chat about. Chat about. Um, a lot of breaking news today. How are you, Craig? Good, you? Good, good. How was your hunting trip, by the way? Did you catch anything? Um, other than the deer forgetting to show up. Um <laughs> So, yeah, I I figured you didn't catch anything because I didn't see any pictures. But yeah, they didn't get the memo. They didn't get the memo. All right, we're gonna start off with the um, kind of the two breaking news today. One one's really not too much breaking news. Getting our takeaways and then our NFL power rankings. The biggest breaking news today was the Jets fire Robert Sala. Two and three start. Um, now I, I I don't know about you guys, but I never thought Robert Sala was that great of a head football coach in the first place. Um, they say that Aaron Rodgers didn't was blindsided by this and didn't have any say so in this, but I don't, I think if you believe that, then I could, I got a bridge I could sell you because I don't believe that one bit. Um, any, any, any people in this, in this podcast here that think Robert Sala was a good head coach? Um, not a good head coach, but he, listen for the situation that the Jets were in, they needed a head coach that was willing to just bend over backwards and do whatever it took to please Aaron Rodgers. And Robert Sala did that, in my opinion. He did whatever they wanted, right? So it's kind of hard true. to even judge him. I mean, because, I mean, kind of have I, no, no backbone, I guess. Because, I mean, let's be real. I, I think this is more on Aaron Rodgers than anything. And I say that because. Rodgers does not do pre-snap motion. He doesn't allow the offense to be creative. He doesn't like pre-snap motion. He likes, I'm going to get to the line, I'm going to make my reads, and it's live or die on Aaron Rodgers making the right decision, calling the right play. Um, he kills any creativity on offense, and that's why he stuck with his guy, Nathaniel Hackett. We saw the job he did when he went to Denver. It was one of the worst coaching jobs in the history of the NFL, but this guy swears by him because he knows he runs his old style offense that won't he won't allow people to change. So I, I 100% agree that this is Rodgers, and um, I don't think watching him play his five games, I don't think he's got much left in the tank like I thought he did. Um, I don't know if it's an Aaron. I don't think the, Aaron Rodgers is not having much left in the tank thing. I don't know if I necessarily agree. I think it's like a weird thing of uh, the older guys that you see in the NFL, like Joe Flacco, Philip Rivers, towards the end, where you just see some vet plays that look astounding and then like the mediocre day-to-day -day average stuff like the play-to-play -play stuff is actually kind of crappy um i don't know what that could attribute that to and brian you were as a packers fan if i recall wasn't there a time towards the end of rogers tenure where he was frustrated that with that old style offense where he wanted some cheap motions installed and he was kept complaining about like teams that have motions and sweeps and all this stuff and guys am i misremembering this well that that was at the end of mccarthy's i don't think that really happened with the floor if, if i'm if i'm mistaken with mccarthy the floor is big on that right yeah we use it a lot more um i really like the in his offense what he calls but rogers at the end of matt of mccarthy's career which or time in green bay which i totally under i think he lost the game in arizona on purpose to get him fired um he, that's what's his biggest complaint was that the offense was boring and they would come up with these plays and and I don't know if it was pre stat motion or not but they would come up with these plays that they always practiced but when it came to game time they never called them never played them McCarthy refused to to put them on the field um, so yeah you you are right about that but gotcha um, I'm just yeah, curious I, to that because I, yeah. I, I do agree with you that that's what you're seeing in in New Jersey or New York right now where that's kind of just Aaron Rodgers forte and he's bullying everybody there. And I think rarely has there been a demonstration of uh, NFL quarterbacks that hold their team hostage and do everything 
for the benefit of them. I think Tom Brady's the only example where that works out for the good of everybody. Um, secondly, I think, funnily enough, I think Hard Knocks has broken all of our brains towards what a good head coach is or not. Because I remember watching Dan Campbell on Hard Knocks, and I thought that dude was silly and goofy and rah rah, and I didn't really believe it while I watched it. And then I watched Robert Sala, and he looked like a pro, and Matt Eberflus kind of looked serviceable on Hard Knocks. I don't know. He's kind of a joke, too. But I don't really know what a good NFL head coach looks like in terms of those behind the scenes stuff. So was Robert Sala a problem? Probably not. I think that's a lot closer than anything. But he definitely was in that tier with me where, you know, I, I put him in that category with like Eberflus, Sala, and sorry, Craig, like Mike McCarthy. Like they might not necessarily screw you week to week, but they're definitely not winning you any games. So usually the week after a big head coach firing like this, you're going to see one of two things, an absolute catastrophic collapse or some sort of stupid Antonio Pierce two to three game uptick because everybody's excited that the guy was gone. Now, if Aaron Rodgers was the only guy really, really banging the table to get him out of there, the rest of the team is probably going to be pretty pissed because if I'm not mistaken, Robert Sala was the defensive guy and the defense was doing a pretty good job. The offense was the problem really. And Robert Sala being gone, and now I don't even know who's the interim unless they're just like saying that, you know, the defense is the problem. And now Aaron Rodgers, we're taking the shackles off of Aaron Rodgers. I don't know how much shackles Sala was putting on Aaron Rodgers to begin with. So we'll yeah, find but, out very, very quickly. But but you got to look at how it happened. They're not saying the defense was the problem. They're saying we had an encounter with Robert Sala that was extreme enough to get him walked out of here. He went in there and it's, it's, listen. I don't know what he said or what he did. The way they handled it, this, this was not planned. This was not like a planned firing by any means. Right. I don't think. So, and you know what's funny, guys? They they escort people out of my job when they fire them in my building, and we have state police that works in my building. So usually there's two state police officers because there's been a lot of times where like they like trip down the stairs at the very end. And they're still hired, so now you got to pay a medical. <laughs> Robert Sala should have taken every opportunity he had to be slam like, my nope. head against the wall on the way out. <laughs> Anything. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The way they handled it, they, he didn't get to say goodbye to anybody. They, they, they. He walked in the door and said, "Get your, get your stuff in a box and get out of here." Uh, Craig, what are your, what are your takes on Robert Sala and why maybe he was fired? I, I mean, um. <clears throat> I, I think a big part of the Jets right now is chemistry um, and and time. You, you know, Rodgers had no time. He didn't play any of the preseason the year before, plays one snap or two snaps, blows his Achilles out, and then has another, you know, year off and then comes in and doesn't play any of the preseason. He has had no work with any of these guys. Yeah. It's not like he's played with them. It's not like – they tried to bring in guys from Green Bay and, and that, that he knew and that he, you know, had, you know, known before. That didn't work. Um, Sala had a, a, a complete bad draw from the start. He, he gets Rodgers. He gets hurt. He's got to deal with, you know, the, the, the rookie quarterback who everybody knows was not an NFL quarterback. Um so they lose a bunch of games there, and then he comes in this year and he has his quarterback, but they just haven't played well. The defense has kept him in games, and that's solid. That's what he was brought in for was the defense. Um, I, I just, I mean, I think he is taking. He's the fall guy, and yeah. and like Dave said, I don't think. I think you're going to do one of two things. You're either going to fall on your face, or the team's going to be like, "All right, that guy's gone now." Aaron Rodgers runs the offense and, and this interim guy doesn't know. I mean, he doesn't know anything about the team and the football. And I mean, I, I mean, it's just, I think the team goes in the tank and spirals out of control. And I think Rodgers either leaves there and goes to try to get on with another team and, and one last hurrah, or he just says, Hey, I'm done. And that's off walks the away. Sunset. Well, their schedule doesn't get really much easier. They got the Bills this Sunday. All right. I'm sorry, this Monday. Um, they've got the Steelers, which the Steelers aren't a problem. They've got the Patriots, which Patriots aren't a problem. Then you got Houston. Um, so four games there. 
and honestly, they should have beat Minnesota if Aaron Rodgers doesn't throw three interceptions. But um, I mean, so but they're I guess they're my... tied for second in their division, though. This it's isn't not, like yeah, a, an zero and four like, start. Like, and, I, one and, and, four. and I know Greg, like you said, he's the fall guy, and like, but like fall guy for what? This is your shot. Like last year was your bigger window. Yeah. This year you still have an opportunity. Like this is what you have left. And well, as an ownership, you're it. just as an ownership, you're just gonna pluck, unpluck this thing and implode it. I I know what you're saying. He's the fall guy, but I mean that's like the typical term. But there's nothing to fall for here. Like this is just I don't know, man. This is I think a spur it reeks of, the moment of thing. it reeks it's of desperation. Crazy, it's it they does. want they got Rodgers to win now, and they're like, this is not the start we wanted. Right. Two and three, we got a losing record. Everyone said we should have won the division. That you know, two is out. Um, the Bills have been playing really good, uh, Josh Allen. But this is a desperation win now kind of move. Uh, or uh... seems kind of like they were supposed to win now, and they haven't been living up to expectations. They but it's, it is kind of weird. Coordinators, I don't know. Like, to, well, he's to the me, new interim, the, the multi, um, the new def- the defense coordinator. What I heard is he wanted to fire interim. Nathaniel Hackett. And they, I think that conversation didn't go over well. They said Nathaniel's Hackett job was was going was on the line before Robert Sala, and then Robert Sala. That tells me that Rogers went in there and said, "You ain't firing this guy, so you better figure it out." And they said, "Robert Sala, see you later," because Nathaniel Hackett is Rogers' guy. Period. In the discussion. That's kind of where I was going with this. For yeah. Three quick addressments that I would like to go through in order, I guess, Brian. You, you listed those four games. I don't see how getting rid of Robert Sala in any of those four games gives you a bonus or a, an advantage, right? You, right. you listed like the uh, Patriots, uh, Bills. Like getting rid of Robert Sala is not in, now increasing your odds of beating those teams for some reason. That's right. One. Two, I agree. desperation mode for what? What are you desperate about? Your offense was better under Zach Wilson and Nat Hackett last week, last year. And Zach Wilson's the third string quarterback on Denver for Christ's sake at this point. So we're talking about Garrett Wilson performing better. You have more running backs this year. You have a better offensive line this year, statistically on paper. And everything is there. The only difference this year from last year's offense is Aaron Rodgers being back. So yeah. you, you could, you say it's like the panic button. I get what you're saying. It does feel like a desperation move. And I forget the ownership's name and uh, for the jets. I think it's a uh, Woody, Woody Johnson Allen or Woody, 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 Woody Johnson. Johnson. That's definitely not Woody Allen. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, Woody Johnson just being like, yeah, dude, like we need this to work right now. And for some reason, he's obsessed with Aaron Rodgers. So I think, and that was going to be my third point. Like, let's play this out. Robert Sala walks in there and he goes like, here's what I want. I'm the head fucking coach. That's what you hired me for. And this is my call. Either we are benching Aaron Rodgers or we are firing Nathaniel Hackett. Woody Johnson's the only one or whoever the GM is in New New York. I don't know off the top of my head goes absolutely the fuck not. Aaron Rodgers will leave mid season. If you fire Nathaniel Hackett and Robert Sala goes, well, motherfucker, if that's the case, then don't even have me as head coach. If I don't get to make that call. And they said, you got it. You're not head coach. (laughs) See you later. Put some stuff in a box and head the door. Yeah, it, it's it was it's an interesting we, we move. We can swear at, on your and, show, right? You guys don't care, do you? Well, I try to oh, keep okay. it down a little bit, try but keep it clean that's then. okay. Right. That's okay. I'll keep it clean moving yeah. forward. Um, it's a, just a weird move at two and three. I, I understand if they're zero and zero and five, one and one and four. I don't think the Bengals are 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 are. are uh, I mean, they're struggling, but I don't think they're as desperate. This move just seems and reaches desperation. And like I said, this has Aaron Rodgers written all over, in my opinion. But and, you I know, think the scenario funny. I laid out is probably the most likely in that case because it's two and three. Yeah, yeah. It, it's funny from like a, a Bears fan's point of view because, you know, he, that guy's hurt us so much. And like, although I even had him as one of my top teams, and I'll, I'll recognize the talent and everything like that, it is kind of satisfying watching it spiral and fall apart from a distance. <laughs> and, but I expected it the whole time because I, I knew yeah. it would because he's not Tom Brady. Tom Brady didn't eat a strawberry for like 20, 25 years. This guy's you know, taking drugs. Like, well, I, listen, this this stuff catches up to you. And and he's really cocky and arrogant. But like, and, man, Father and, Time catches up to it all. I just, I hate you guys for making the right choice and moving on from him. I really do. <laughs> we we moved on to him a year too late. 
my opinion. I was the I, guy going, I, trade I, him now, trade him now, and they held on. Him at such a high value. Yeah, too. we would have got a lot such more back. When you didn't, have you guys didn't San Francisco a Jets offer game? pick three for him or something before they drafted uh, Trey Lance? There was something where there was something in that draft there. they really made yeah. a legit trade offer for Aaron Rodgers. We said no. Should have taken. Have you guys watched any extended clips of a Jets game, like the actual play by plays and stuff? They've had two national games. I've watched those two. Yeah, I've watched the the national on on the Vikings game. Uh, Every time Aaron Rodgers misses, I mean, it's just wide eyes and just going, "What are you doing?" Like that's just that's the way he's always been, and it's yeah. And I think it works when you're talented. It doesn't work anymore when you're forty and you're the problem. Like that stuff doesn't work anymore. You're hundred percent right. And we talk about Tom Brady's on the sideline screaming at people. Well, he's got the championship rings to back it up. But when you're losing and you keep losing and it doesn't work like that anymore. But I think Craig hit it on the doorknob too. Well, go is he doesn't show up to mandatory practice. He's like, I'm going to go to Egypt. Sorry guys. See you later. He doesn't take his guys out in practice. When, when Aaron, when Aaron Rodgers left Jordan love his first, he took his guys to out in practice. Mahomes, what did he do? He takes his guys to Texas and he and he's running routes and getting familiar with them. That kind of dedication to the team and artwork and and getting better as a team. Aaron Rodgers is above that, so I think it's a big part of it too. And 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 Brett Favre was that way too at the end of his career. He didn't. He was like, yeah, I'm a diva now. So, but all right, guys. Well, Drake May. I saw this a while ago watching. Um, some I watched the Bengals Ravens recap and they had some breaking news. Drake May will start for the New England Patriots versus the Texans. I think it's kind of a weird game to start him against one of the best defenses in the football. Um, and me, me and Craig kind of talked about this last week. I don't know why you draft a guy that high to sit behind Jacoby Brissett because Jacoby Brissett sucks. But they're starting him finally. So do you guys think Drake May is going to be a good quarterback? Craig, we'll start with you on this one. I, I... I thought so when I watched the tape. I, I thought he was going to be serviceable and give him some wins. And, and But that team just has nothing offensively to – like the offensive line isn't great. The running game's not great. The wide receivers are average at best. The play calling is all over the map. I, I just don't know how much success he's going to have. How many reps did he get in training camp with, with once they moved to, to Brissett? Brissett was taking the first team. So how much how many reps does he have with these guys that he's throwing the ball to? I just think they didn't do this kid any favors from the get-go. They drafted him, and, and they immediately, two weeks into training camp, said he's going to be the backup and Jacoby's going to be the starter. So he's taking – second team reps they they put him in a game here put him in a game there and and i just don't and again like you said uh, against the the texans that that's, where, <laughs> where, that's yeah. what we're deciding you know and, and if he goes out and looks terrible do they do they you know do like they did in carolina and bury him on the bench and leave him there i mean i, I just i just don't think they're doing this kid any favors i agree with you you know the, the biggest knock on him coming out of college is he played for North Carolina and he didn't, he didn't play in the right. SEC. He didn't play in those big games. We didn't see him in those big time games. He's got a really good, he's got a strong arm. I don't know how accurate he is with the football. Um, I don't think he's going to be that good. And I think it's, it's, it's because I think the Patriots don't have really an identity right, right now. What are we? Are we, you know, are we the mediocre team? Are we, we, are we rebuilding? Are we trying it, you know, to win it all, which I don't think they are obviously, but, where are they? What are they? They don't got, like you said, they ain't got much talent. They're more of a, we're going to play good defense and we're going to run the ball hard. And, but I just don't see too much success there. Um, and they've lost their identity. I think obviously since, and I can't blame them since you lose Belichick and, and, and Brady, but um, I just don't know if Drake May is going to make it, but what about you, Paul? So, you know, everything you guys are saying is true, but I think that's why it makes sense to do it now because you're saying they didn't do him any favors. No, not doing him any favors would have been tossing him in there right away, you know, with everything going wrong and then add a bunch of pressure to it. Right. So listen, this, this team's on a four game losing streak. They're last in their division. 
it, there's no more pressure. You're not winning this year, right? Like nobody expects them to go out there and be great. If you do, it's a bonus. It's a plus. If you could kind of save this thing, all right. But but that's not the expectation here. The expectation here now is go out there, get your reps, get adjusted to the speed of this league. Let's see what you can do. Let's make some things work. But I mean, it's under a different atmosphere altogether because everybody knows that they're not going to be good. So, you know, you're just going to go in there and focus on trying to build something. And and at that point, um, I, I like Drake May a lot. Um, I think the size, I believe he's like 6'5", 220. Like, he's a big kid. Um, I think there's a lot to like about him. But uh, the one thing that I remember hearing pre-draft uh, is that he's very raw. He is going to need some time. He's going to need some time to develop and things like that. So, yeah, you know, sitting him five games, Definitely probably a favor to him. Now you put them in there and you just kind of start from the basics and work on the basics. It is a lost season for them. So it depends on, I think, how you're looking at it. But I think the move makes sense. You drafted them for a reason. You know, might as well get them in there now and start working on getting good for next year. So, you got any takes there, David? Yeah. I got a little bit of something in between you guys as well, though. Um, I do agree with Paul with there that you do need to get him as reps for sure. I just don't know if the timing of it makes any sense. So if this was like six or seven games left in the season and I'm looking at their schedule, like do it against, I don't know, the Rams, the Dolphins, the Colts, the Cardinals, the Bills. That's the end of your season. Like Paul said, when it, when it doesn't matter, that's when you can get the guy that has reps, but the there's really two ways this can go, right? Is if he's bad, you are going to, you, he'll get reps, but now you can't bench him. You can't sit him out if he needs that. You have to stay with him for like 10 more games, and that could crush more confidence than it gives him more reps and positivity. Like Bryce Young probably looked better in a quarter against the Bears in garbage time than he did in his first 17, 18 games because pressure was off, right? So that pressure isn't necessarily a good thing for all guys. Um so I do agree that he needs his reps and it probably just would have been smarter with like six or seven games left. And then now that you look at it though, it's like, what are your two possible results is you, if it goes bad and he's really, really bad, I guess the positive behind that is now you're looking for another quarterback next year, but you can't just give up on a guy after 10 games. So that is yeah. kind of like the, you know, the two sided uh, mirror, the double, you know, two, uh, whatever phrase you want to use of like, double sided kind of coin. Bite you. Double-sided coin, two, you know, whatever sword analogy, you know, double-edged you know, sword, like, all that. Double-edged stuff. sword, yeah. it's gonna kind of like bite you in the ass because you can't give up on him in ten games, but he might totally suck and look like an absolute catastrophe. That's if he's bad, and then you can't bench him because it's gonna ruin confidence, or you're just gonna get his brains bashed in and get him hurt, ruins more confidence, whatever. Let's say he's great because I did like him, and uh, the crazy thing is like this guy might be like, you know depending on how this season went like we have five good rookie quarterbacks in the league this year i have this theory that i've been working on right now where i'm like i think the rest of the league is just kind of either gone down or the quarterback um exceptionalism has gone down where there's not like those three or four guys i think everybody's just like good uh, like mediocre there's just like two or three really really good guys every year now um and then they go back down to earth because you got bonix is doing decent i think I mean, who the hell knows how J.J. McCarthy would have been doing right now? Probably pretty damn good if he was starting. Caleb, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about him. I've seen nothing but growth, and he looks really, really promising. Jalen is doing really well in Washington. Oh. I think there's going to be a little bit comeback down to the earth beast. there because I've been watching. I don't know about that. I think he's solid. I don't know if that's necessarily going to maintain. And then, like, Drake May probably will come in and play pretty good football, though. So, like, now let's say you're better. And right now you're the first overall pick in next year's draft and you're just shooting yourself in the foot and putting yourself at eight. So now you're giving him less support. So now if he's mediocre and wins you like two extra games that Jacoby wouldn't, I don't know. I just don't see the benefit of doing it now. I do see the benefit of doing it period, maybe with like five or six games left, um, but not necessarily right now. So that's kind of where I'm at. I was a big fan of you draft the guy that high, you don't have a quarterback. Jacoby Brissett, we know who he's a journeyman who's not going to win you – he's going to be your mediocre football team. He, eight eight wins, nine wins, maybe seven. You know, I, I would have started him. We're going to figure out what this guy is. And and the sooner you figure out if he's the guy, then the sooner – then you can start looking for your next quarterback if he's not. Now, I'm not saying give up on him year one. I think a lot of guys – 
give up on their quarterbacks too young. I think you need at least three years unless he looks absolutely lost, but you want to see some progression. Um, I was well, fine. That's funny because your organization <clears throat> has sat quarterbacks for years, <laughs> but the difference is, and here's the toughest is we had the guy we had Brett. We had Brett Favre. We drafted his replacement. He could sit. We had Aaron Rodgers. We drafted his replacement. Love. He could sit and learn something from these two legends of the game. Jacoby Brissett. I mean, he, he could, yeah. Is he going to be able to teach him some things? Yes, of course he's been in the league longer, but to me, you don't have, a, you don't have the quarterback that's going to give you a chance to win and, and, and pitch you where you want to be. Right. We're all fight for the Super Bowl. So at that point, I'm fine starting him year one, especially since you draft him so high. If you took him later, like late in the first round, or you took him second round, then fine any means. But when you draft a quarterback in the top five, to me, you got to start him unless you have that guy, and and the Patriots definitely don't. But and it's hard to get what do what Green Bay's done right to get the great quarterback. All right, we see him kind of declining. Let's get his replacement in here. Um, and we've done it I twice, just, but I just think the league somewhere five or six years ago shifted to where that used to be the, the standard was you drafted a guy and let him sit for a couple of years and learn from the guy that was there. And then you put him in. And now all of a sudden, five or six <clears> years ago, it was just like, we drafted him. He's playing day one. That's yeah. it. And, and, and that's the new standard. I mean, the, the Caleb Williams, the J- Jaden, Daniels, the the um, C.J. Strouds, the the Bryce Youngs. I mean, they're all just day one. Here's the keys. Have a good time. And and sometimes it works in the in the Stroud, you know, deal. The the C.J. You know, I mean, uh, Caleb Williams is working better than I thought it would. Uh, I didn't think that it was going to be as as successful as it has become. And Jaden Daniels has definitely had more success. Than, than what, oh, yeah. Absolute what beast. I thought he would have. Um, I mean, I thought that team was going to be down with the Giants in the bottom of the division, and here they are leading the way. I mean, they really haven't. Their schedule's been – It's been pretty easy. Yeah. I mean, the Browns are – what. I mean, they're not – that's not a big win. Worst team in football. Me. Yeah. It, it, them and the Panthers. That quarterback over there is is – I mean, they've got some problems. So they're hoping, we'll they're, they're, yeah, they're hoping he gets in more trouble so they can get rid of right, his contract. Right. But I, I, I got a question. So, do you think like Peyton Manning going out there rookie year and throwing twenty eight interceptions was that beneficial for him? Because Brian, I agree with you. Like, 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 throw um, them out there and see if they can yeah. sink or swim. Because you've seen examples of guys that can swim. You've seen examples in Seattle where they they take a guy in the third round like Russell Wilson and give him the keys day one. Right. And it's not yeah. a problem. So I think what it kind of falls down to is your confidence and your ability to coach. Look at San Francisco. Exactly. They drafted 100%. Trey Lance, pick three. They moved on from him pretty quick. I mean, I know they started him right away, but and then he got hurt. But, like, you see what you see in camp and in practice and everything like that. And as long as you're confident with your ability to <clears throat> evaluate that talent accurately – you'll know what the right choice is. And so, you know, that's the thing about Drake May. So if they had to sit him for five games, it tells me that one, they don't think he's ready to go and do this. And that could be concerning for a guy you drafted so high. Cause I agree with you, Brian. Exactly. You just toss him in there. And they put a lot of, him. yeah, they put a lot of pressure on when you get, when you get that top five. Uh, draft Peyton pick. Manning yeah. wired differently. And, and the 28 yeah. interceptions could have ruined a lot of people, but Peyton Manning just wired differently. And one, and, you know, and I I got to be honest with you too. Which is when why I, it bothers when, 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 me that we try and pay everybody like they're Peyton Manning. But okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I got to be honest with you. When I saw Jordan Love play for the first first time, not his first year starting, but when I saw him play, I was like, "Oh man, this guy's not looking good." And I went back to when Rogers start. He didn't, you know, he didn't start year one, but he stepped kind of far when when he first played. You saw, yeah, he may have been bad at the beginning. He had a lot of interceptions or whatever, but you saw those flashes. Oh, man, what a throw. That was an amazing throw. Oh, what look what he did here. Look what he did there, even though he struggled. And you saw him progress and, and turn out to be one of the best quarterbacks um, to play the game. And I judged Love a little too harsh in the beginning, but um, he's obviously better than I thought he would be. So, but, yeah, I, I think you throw him in there. You draft him that high. 
and you see what he's got. And as long as he's not completely incompetent and looks incompetent back there, then there's something to grow on. And it's and to leave you with you, Paul. It's all about coaching. Do you have the right coach? Do you have the right people behind him to build that quarterback up? And I, I, I like what yeah, Bo Nix has done. In those there was Sean Payton this year. Can I just say also, but, I even in the middle of this conversation, I just don't. I think almost when, when I, um, I'm just a little bit more pragmatic with like my quarterback opinion. I just like saw that news and I was just like, whatever, fucking who cares? Like if he started yeah. like week six or week 10, I was just like, whatever. Cause even in this conversation, I think we're using multiple quarterbacks to prove our points while simultaneously proving that none of these systems fucking matter at all. <laughs> we just said like one guy sat for three fucking years. One guy was a third round pick and blew everyone's brains out in uh in training camp one guy was tom brady who sat behind drew bledsoe who ruptured his spleen um the most recent example i can think of of one that just doesn't make any sense is like josh allen like josh allen got eight starts looked mediocre started slightly progressing that's like the last example of like an upward trajectory that just kind of never stopped patrick mahomes got one year to sit baker mayfield started right away sucked for a while now he's awesome again it doesn't make sense. None it of it does. makes sense. There's we not, don't know no anything. Clear path. Right. No, yeah. so, so we like, don't know anything, and neither do these coaches because they wouldn't have let Baker Mayfield walk and replaced him with Deshaun Watson. So that's <laughs> well, that's just David. I, I that's think why the thing that helps Baker is he 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 finally has the same coordinator for he doesn't have five different coordinators every year. He was losing. But Dave Canales left yes, last year and he's doing better this year. Yeah, yeah, and Craig and in his first year with his first coordinator, he made playoffs and made a deep run. Yeah, think about right. that. That the Browns got rid of the best quarterback they ever had. Yeah, hundred percent. And replaced just him with the, none of it makes sense. Like well, we'll, yeah. we'll know. I guess right. if you're a Patriots fan, you're just like, I I can't wait to watch ten weeks of like, let me find out. Yes, well, but but that's the thing is that's exactly why you do it sooner than later. That's so exactly why you just toss them in there. Because you, why you start wait that clock. if it's all such a crapshoot? Yeah. And this and that. Now, there's been, like I said, with the Packers. I'll agree with two, you 100% there. Yeah, there's been two examples with the Packers where you sit a guy for years and he comes in and he's a decent quarterback. Now, the book on love is still yet to be written. I think he's not Favre. I think he's not Rodgers. And I think he's very average. And I think you guys will be looking to upgrade that position at some point. But regardless, it, it, it's still – in, initially it's worked out right so however could you imagine if every team started trying to sit quarterbacks for two three years like the i think i, I think terrible. you would have the same exact thing some guys go in there and do well some guys go in there yeah. and don't do well and then that we two years wasted delayed. three years of trying to replace the guys that don't do well so might as well just toss them in there man brian might i, well I love i love they can either uh, ball or can't it. You're very bad at hiding your feelings. And um, <laughs> oh, I, so yes. I'm just no, I and I I'm not a I don't consider Bears Packers a rivalry because rivalry implies that it's like 50 50. Um, so I don't really hate on you guys necessarily. Over the I want to beat you years, guys. It is. Yeah, it's all rivalry. Whatever. Like, <laughs> cool, man. We've had two world wars over this thing. Like, let's calm down about who cares about the rivalry. Like, um, I don't really hate on Packers. I just do want to beat you guys and like you know, whatever, get our turn. Um, yeah. But like, honest question, dude. I, and I'm just saying this from like, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure about Caleb Williams, but I think the majority of the league is like 65, 35 positive. They're like, damn, this kid's working his way up. He's going to be pretty good at worst. And then at, you know, at best he'll be like top 10, maybe top five one day. Like what is your confidence level of Jordan love? Because I when I saw that contract, were you when you were in that contract situation as a fan? Were you did you see the the dotted line thing getting signed and you were like, thank God, because we would have we would have been so screwed without him. Like I'm still I'm still so 50 50 if love is even like good. Three oh. years guaranteed is the oh. big big here's the problem. Right. Here's the problem. We've kind of backed ourselves into a little bit of a hole on on the whole. We said Aaron, we set Jordan Love, but when we decided to play him, we had one year to figure out if he's the guy. Right? We had one year to figure it out, or he goes to free agency. And in that year, first six games, seven games, I told Craig, I said, This guy doesn't look very good. I was like, This guy's not the guy. But he finished, 
he finished the last half of the season better than any quarterback in the NFL, better than Patrick Mahomes, better than, and we saw him progress. I've never seen a quarterback progress as bad as he looked to where he is now. Um, is I was calm. I well, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. That's now. why I'm saying, like, you're like, you know, we're just well, like not a hundred percent sold. I'm what just... Paul? Paul Paul thinks he's absolutely average. I don't think he's average. But am I I'm not the guy going love's going to be I'm not expecting him to be Aaron Rodgers or Brett Favre. That's a very high bar, right? Um I'm expecting him to be top 10 quarterback. Um top 5, you know, you look at the money he's getting paid, but when when we were going to I knew we were going to sign him and yeah, he's getting a lot of money, but what quarterback isn't getting a lot of money that's ready to sign and we're not going to move on from him. What he just did in the playoffs, he, he came in and smoked the Cowboys like crazy. We should have beat the 49ers, um, should have, would have, could have, right? But I think he's got the talent. Now, does he make some boneheaded plays? Oh, sure, by all means. Like, the, he, he threw some passes against the Eagles. I'm like, what was that? They threw well, like these, last week is going to be like a top five worst play of the season, right? He, like, he 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 goes to throw away the ball from getting a safety and throws a pick six at the two-yard line. And then you see him go out and throw a 60-yard in the air pass to – on the dime to read like he he i think he's gonna be good i'm not expecting him like i think paul and a lot of other people expect him to be aaron Rodgers or Brett Favre. i don't expect that because that's a very high bar i do think he will be good i do think and you gotta look at and, and here's the other reason you gotta look at it too he's not throwing to some amazing stud number one Devonte adams wide receivers he's it's a wide receiver by committee it's very young i like what lafleur does with our offense i think he's got a lot of of uh say in what Jordan Love's going to be and his coaching and I really think he's going to be in Green Bay for a long time. I really like Aaron, uh Matt LaFleur, but I like Jordan Love. At first I wasn't convinced, I'm convinced now. Um we'll see. I I I thought we were going to win the division this year or be number 2. The Lions pretty much got us probably going to take it. I don't know. I don't know if Minnesota's that tough. Um or they they've kind of surprised everybody. But I will say this about Caleb Williams. When he came out, I was hoping and praying he wasn't good because if he's good, you, you guys had – you and the commanders had the best offseason in football. If Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels pans out, which Jaden Daniels is on a different level, I think he's the best rookie quarterback this season by far. Caleb Williams has progressed. Like you saw him week one, didn't look very – I mean, he looked terrible. Week two, a little bit better. Week three, a little bit better. He had a good game last week, but it's against the Carolina Panthers. So we got to take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. You know, what's funny is so far he's looking like he's progressing. So that's good for you guys. With and that, your defense is good as well. With that, it's like, okay, so Jaden Daniels is looking great, but then how much room do you have to progress? And then is that also real or is that – do you, know, you told me, the, the, you know, three takes from this week, and one of them – for me was the nfc east sucks like i did not think and and craig i'm gonna toss this your way like i did not think (laughs) you guys were going to be this bad this year and i think because of that washington seeing a lot of success never mind this is i'm sorry to have taken this show in such a crazy direction real quick i love it brian can i just finish up with this like this nfc north bears and this rookie thing jordan love will be until he proves he's not between the 12th and sixth best quarterback every year to me He'll never break top five, like, I guess, like, towards the end of last year. Um, But, like, I had Trevor Lawrence in top five last year because he was top five. Uh, that's how Ooh. quickly those things can go away. Yeah, He was top five last year. Like, it, it just, you know, I've had Dak Prescott at top five at some points. But, like, he just never does well, it in the playoffs kind of thing. But That's you know, a top um, five quarterback. Right. That's so, like, it's, like, it's one of those things. But, you know, it, it, it's such a – if you're being a dick – I think the lowest you could put him is like 12. If you're being like super kind, you can maybe go like five. I would never put him like top. And I'm not going to argue like with that, like that. Right. From what we've yeah. seen, you know, I, I can't argue with that take at all. Um, and uh, and, oh, like, and I don't, like, I don't, I'm not saying yeah. it to be like smart guy or whatever. I just no, no, no. My I, opinion on Jordan love overall. Cause I, just, I get I it. I was reading your face the whole time. I'm just like, <laughs> and, and Paul, let's calm the fuck. Down. Let's calm down. About I think Caleb he's, I like think he's that. better than what um, Paul thinks he is. Um, but well, I was, I think I'm the one who told Paul that I didn't like him at first to begin with. So, <laughs> um, but, but uh, I think I might've brainwashed Paul a little bit on that one. Um, well, I, 
Well, I'm interested then, to hear about the NFC takeaway five takeaway or the the takeaways this week and the NFC suck. And I'm I'm, I'm let's go back to that. That's a, that's a fun conversation yeah. for me to have too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Craig, what do you Craig. think about all this? Because I mean, your favorite Give us your NFC. East. Yeah. What do you think is going on there with the Giants? The the Eagles. Well, the Giants opinion, are always have suck, but been worse than I thought part. they were. And I I think because of that, like I said, Washington's taken the opportunity there and just capitalizing on it. I just don't think it's a long term real thing. You're wrong, right? On um, that, I believe. By the way, sorry, Jane Daniels. Thought. All right, Hold the break there, Jaden. The guy has the guy has more Breaking touchdown passes Lewis. than incompletions. <laughs> That's insane. And we talked about okay. insane. But, uh, Brian, I hear just correct, said, nine, you ninety. Just said the Panthers don't matter. Jaden Daniels has beaten the Giants, the Bengals, right. Right. the Cardinals, and yeah. the Browns. How about we calm that yeah. down? I, hey, like, break look on the JD. You can't. But, but he the Panthers look. don't matter. I just, just I said. Just said, said Pan- you just said. Taylor I just Williams said. Can't judge himself on the Panthers. I said you can't judge them off the Panthers. Right, and that the Panthers. Move. But there's right. five well, you, other. I just there's, need you four teams that are I know, just as bad but, as the Panthers and Jaden Daniels is proving that he's good against them. The, yeah. There's no other team that's on the same level as bad as the Panthers, unless Giants, and maybe the Browns. Yeah. All he's Giants proving are is and, and, and he just bad. and that's two of them. <laughs> but but you're 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 missing the point. My point was yours was one game, and his is five games of in the ninety against percentile. Five bad teams. It doesn't matter. Five games in one game. That's a big difference. Into big, the nitty that's, that's gritty on Jaden Daniels, I'm going to say one thing. Cliff Kingsbury has directly translated his LSU playbook into his playbook, right. and he's limited his plays to about 50 passing plays in the entire playbook. It's not sustainable. Also, his spread chart of his pass completions is about 70%. And you can quote me on this. Like You can go back and look at it. His spread flow you chart put any pressure is about on the se- kid, He's going to fold like a cheap tank. It's about 65% to the right side because the guy cannot progress more than an RPO look right and throw because and it's about 65%. First, and he runs at and first then, notice. And he's he's 165 pounds, actually. Not, not like being a dick. He's actually 165 pounds in the modern NFL. Injuries aside, I'm not going to throw that in there. His the on paper sustainability of this team is not high. It's Cliff Kingsbury's offense that he's simplified already on top of it being against bad teams. The highest spread, and I don't know how much gambling you guys do, but like the highest spread in this week gamble. in week six is minus six and a half against the two and three Baltimore Ravens against the four and one commanders. Vegas doesn't lose money, and that is the highest predicted just demolishing in the week this week in the NFL. Baltimore is also the best team in football. That's my number one ranking, but still the, if a four and one commanders team walks in there and gets trounced as the highest spread against Vegas, that's, that's not speaking highly. The of James best Daniels. team in the NFC East is the Cowboys. The question is just, does it pan out over the course of the season? Do they actually regain control of that division? Okay, so did you asked me if it surprised me. The answer is no, because I called the Eagles implosion at the end of last year. Something happened in that locker room, and the that head, head coach, coach lost terrible. the locker room. The, the quarterback was, you know, there's rumors that the quarterback getting knocked out in the tunnel by one of the wide receivers before, you know, deal. Um, that team's in shambles. The Giants are terrible. And the Cowboys are injured and one dimensional at one of the most important positions in football in the running back. Why you have Dalvin Cook sitting on your practice squad, he is clearly not worse than anything you have in your backfield right now. So at least put him in the backfield and give him a shot to see if he has anything left in the tank. Now, I don't know. Maybe they're seeing something in practice that shows he is worse than what is in the backfield. I don't know. I'm not at the Dallas Cowboys facility watching practice, and they won't show us in an NFL football game what Dalvin Cook looks like. But the Dallas Cowboys are ravished on defense. You have neither pass rusher. You have a cornerback who, in Caleb Carson who played well against, I guess, a bad Browns team, so we really don't know if he's any good. But he's hurt. Uh, Trayvon Diggs is you know, milking an ankle. You just lost two more guys 
on on Sunday night. Um, yeah, they're putting a a defense out there that is is toothpicks and bubble gum, and and they're going to play two of the best teams in football and probably get run out of the building the next two weeks. Yeah. So that's going to hurt, you know. But they do catch the 49ers without, uh, you know, okay, the, the running back. So that helps a little bit. But, I mean, you're, you're not stopping either one of those offenses with that defense they have. They have to, to hope that, that uh, Parsons' ankle heals and he plays one or both of those games because the other guys are on injured reserve. Now Brandon Cooks is on injured reserve. So they're going to miss the next four games. Um, you just didn't see the injuries coming for Dallas. But the other teams, and then Washington is played like they've said. He's, they, they've they played the weakest part of their schedule. They, they're going to have to play a lot better football on the back half when they start playing the Lions, when they start playing, you know, the 49ers, when they start playing the teams like that. Um, and, and, you know, we'll see what Dallas's defense is. Dallas doesn't play them until the back half of the year. So they should have a lot of their their um, defense back. So, you know, head-to-head, -head, they've always played Washington well. Plus, they know, you know, the defense that, that Quinn's going to play because they ran it for years. So, um, I, I don't know. I, I, think, I think the Giants are what they thought they were, and I think the Eagles are what I thought they were. Washington has been better, and Dallas has been hurt and has no running game. It's crazy because Dak Dak is definitely top five quarterback. I don't think you can put him below it, but he's not. He is. They got to look at the numbers. Now, does he win the playoffs? No, he chokes. Um, but your 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 team has done this guy no favors. You say you're Dak all in. Give up. Dak doesn't give yeah. up forty. You got no. You got no running game for him. You got yeah. your offensive line hasn't been all that great, in my opinion. Yeah. You and that's are, expected. You, you have three brand new offensive line. Yeah, you, never you, ha football. you have CD Lamb. That's your only wide receiver. Tolbert right. has been okay, but that's – and you all say Cooks is out. Yeah, but you don't throw him the ball anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Right. Uh, your tight end's pretty good too, but you've done this guy. No, you've done Dak and, Prescott and I no think they need to get, whatsoever. And I think they need to get um, <clears throat> the, the, kid, the kid that, that returns kicks um, – Turpin, Tolbert. Turpin, I think, I get I think they need to get Turpin. I think they need to get Turpin more reps and and throw him the football and and see what he can do. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I I just I really I want to argue that Dak is a top five quarterback. Because, don't make me oh, I, please I don't make me one. argue in Dak's favor because I don't want yeah. to. No, I, 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 I like it. Real quick, I real quick, real quick. I really think, well, though. No, just one sentence. I think there's five quarterbacks. Hold on, hold on, real quick. Five Ryan Sims, I hope you're listening. He is well, five listening. quarterbacks in the AFC alone that are better than any NFC quarterback. So that's just my opinion. Yeah, but that's I've been telling you that point for fucking months. Because like, it's true. So I keep there's swearing. top four that are easy. Mahomes, um, Allen, Jackson, Mahomes Burrow. Mahomes is better than it. Okay, so so who? CJ Stroud over Dak? Like there was conversations of Tua and Dak. Being swapped like no, two that is number not five than Dak. spot. Can't stand the field. Lamar, can make, Lamar can Jackson is not better than Dak it's, Prescott. I'm not taking are, Lamar over. This Dak is Prescott. my argument to. This has been my two argument time, for, for two time months. Okay, there. I don't no. understand why any quarterback resigns in the AFC period when if you want a chance at a Super Bowl, if you're Lamar Jackson, you should have like just taken that. Uh, I don't know who failed that trade. Was it Atlanta or was it uh, Baltimore? If Lamar Jackson was in Atlanta, he'd probably be in the NFC Championship the last like five years consistently, or five years of whatever. He choked in the playoffs. I yeah, just show you just up said Dak doesn't but, even I mean, win in the playoffs. Yeah, so that's I know that's he does it. Victory. But because it's Josh not, Allen, Atlanta, but that doesn't make it's, Lamar it's better than him if he doesn't win. Five. If they both don't Paul's win in the playoffs, right. that doesn't make Paul's right though. It's doesn't make a Lamar healthy better. Joe Burrow. It's Joe Patrick Burrow's, Holmes. but yeah, better. Yeah, healthy Joe Burrow because I think. I predicted the Bengals absolute catastrophe this year just because I knew he needed another year to sit out. I just didn't understand why they forced him out there. Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, and CJ Stroud are five quarterbacks just in the AFC and the top that are better than Dak Prescott. CJ While I like yeah, Dak Prescott, had one good my year. analogy, my analogy for Dak Prescott is he is our generation's uh, Philip. So Brian, even so, even if that number five spot is interchangeable, 
to just anoint Dak Prescott as the fifth best quarterback, to my opinion, is not. You can't. Uh, you CJ can Stroud's good, but him, after, you can make arguments for after one year, after one year, you cannot put him above Dak Prescott. Prescott's never won less than 10 games. I understand. I understand this, guys. But like, I'm, I'm a fan. Saying, I'm with you guys more than I'm against. He was literally, literally, statistically the MVP in football last year, and they he gave should it to have Lamar been Jackson. MVP last year, and they gave it to Lamar Jackson. Yeah. And I don't like, I don't like arguing for Dak and and the Cowboys, but Dak Prescott to me is top five, and he may not Cowboys, win the playoffs. That's Cowboys' that's, biggest that's problem. It's, conversation. It's one name, and it's Jerry Jones, and it's like that's 100%. such a short list of like what right. the Cowboys' problems like. Any decent owner slash GM slash whatever his titles are, like the seven other titles he's given himself, for... it would this team would be in such better shape financially, contract structure wise. Like, just I mean, you can't. I'm sorry, Craig, you just can't keep all three of those no. players. You just can't. Like, you needed no. to trade I one think, of them and I gotten think like a, a king's ransom to lose. I think they handcuffed themselves now to lose the next ten them. years, five years. They do. They. Jerry Jones, for being the smart businessman, does business and football retarded. He waited too long on Dak. Yep, he could have everybody. Dak. He, he could have gotten Dak for a whole lot cheaper two years ago. Yep. And he could have gotten CD a lot CD, cheaper. He could have got CD gotten... cheaper. He could have done Parsons already. You would have had money those... to go get to go get Derrick Henry, which they well, you didn't have no money. And well, if you if you did if you made your contracts better with your players and did them earlier, then later you would have. So and also, an if you, and out of those three guys, the guy that you absolutely should pay to a contract, right? Is Micah it might Parsons. be the he guy did it completely lived. backwards, right? He did it completely backwards. It should have gone Parsons, Dak, CD, right? Mm. And then he did CD, Dak, Parsons. You got, I mean, you got to lock your quarterback up if you think he's the guy. I mean, well, that's what I'm saying. But, but I mean, I think Micah Parsons is the best defensive player in football for the next five years, and that contract is significantly less scary than a. Dak Prescott contract. Right. The 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 worst case scenario you have to do the, is give the, Dak Prescott one dollar more or whatever than Nick Bosa, and the Niners are not hurting on that contract. It's a forty what it's a forty million dollar contract. That's way less scary than the sixty eight million guaranteed that you give Dak Prescott to one guy if he gets hurt or whatever. Like Micah Parsons, if he's hurt for one year on forty mil a year, you can still bubble gum and stick that defense for a year. And then have Michael Parsons come back the next year and still be the best player in football. And you want to talk about Dak getting an MVP? Michael Parsons probably should have two defensive MVPs. It's like the Michael Jordan rule. He could win that reward every year as long as he's on the field. But, you know, uh, he's just not going to because if he doesn't have the insane amount of stats, then it's going to go well, to whoever only, had the best year. The only problem with Parsons is every year he's run out of gas mm -hmm. in the last few weeks in the playoffs. You know, he's he, he is a lot of talking guy too. in week. 16 sounds like a lot 17. of sounds, sounds like there's things. something in the water in Dallas then because they suck the last four weeks of every season. Right. Right. And, and so I guess I, I'm learning why when we see these quarterback um, uh, conversations happen, you always see tears. Yeah, because I, I would imagine that like, OK, yes, Dak Prescott has the opportunity to be the fifth best quarterback. So do a lot of other guys, right? He's in tier B, not tier A. And I guess that's just kind of he's in tier two. It it's yeah, tier it's like two, Patrick exactly. Mahomes tier one, and then tier two starts. Bur I mean, however you want to put it, but yeah. Well, one of my takeaways from from week five is NFC North is uh, the toughest division in the NFL. We don't have we we have not one team in our division that's got a losing record. You got the Vikings who are five and zero. Oh, you got the Lions who are arguably top five team in the nfl you got whatever the packers may be and the, and the bears are promising with a good defense i think this nfc north is a lot better than a lot of people thought thought it was going to be um and and you know the lions are a good football team you know and i rooted after the packers lost last week last year i was like all right i want if the lions win i wouldn't i wouldn't hate it because they've been bad for so long but i you know they thought they were going to run away with this division for a long time but the other teams are like, hold on, you know. I think the Vikings are kind of a fluke, but I think the Bears, the Packers will be be pretty good for um, the foreseeable future, especially if Caleb Williams pans out. But we're currently and undefeated. Jordan Love. We're currently undefeated in our division. Yeah, y'all yeah. play us really game. late. That I think that's why we're ahead of you. Really in the late. I believe year. you guys yeah. have one divisional loss. 
whereas we haven't even played one game yet. So yeah. we're Holy shut up. We're gonna go zero and six in the division. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably right. So, so the worst thing that happened up. to the Bears in the <laughs> NFC North is the fact that the Vikings are five and zero. Like we were all banking on these guys to be the worst team in the division. We, so we, we talked about it, Paul. Yeah, second, yeah, and that's happened. I think completely the opposite way. So you know, it's it's rough. Um, it's it is a tough division. And so, like, I go back to this, like, it's a, it, it, we're all very talented teams and everything like that. But even in the offseason, I asked, well, who's got the worst coaching staff? And I believe it's the Bears. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, that might be the one detail that kind of separates all these teams a little bit. Because, yeah, you're right. The Vikings kind of are a fluke. But, hey, man. Can they, I comment on that real quick, though? Yeah, the yeah. The only thing fluky about them is Sam Darnold. That's the only thing fluky about them. Right. right? Because well, they have two well, head coach. coaching. They have two head coaches. Games. No, they have two head coaches on their staff. It's just their defense. Flores, I didn't see this turnaround in the defense because that's been their biggest fall recently. And then all of a sudden this year, I know they get Brian Flores, but all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, this defense is taking a complete but 180. Even last year going back and you see schematically, like the fluky things about the Vikings are the insane amount of bad luck they've had in their draft and then their offseason pool. Injury. Um, whatever the hell. I mean, a literal death in their draft um and then but that's not fluky though because if you go back to last year you go look at the vikings they overperformed on defense and they had a absolute madman schematically with brian flores and they had a like catastrophic lack of talent on that defense and now you see like what a slight upgrade in talent on that defense is going to be i'm terrified of them moving forward if brian flores doesn't want to go try again at head coaching because kevin o'connell if he gets slightly more consistent quarterback play out of jj mccarthy next year and he's just a more consistent sam Darnold. i don't even think you need explosive i don't know we don't know i mean we, we're talking about these rookie quarterbacks we have no idea what they're capable uh, of that's my take JJ is McCarthy's that he won't either. make it i don't think i mean i i done. agree generally speaking but i mean i don't think anybody saw sam Darnold coming either and he's the mvp of the league right now so i'm just saying the only thing fluky about them necessarily is bad draft luck and a quarterback reclamation project like if jj mccarthy is decent or if another quarterback wants to go there this is what i'm talking about man like if you take any afc top tier quarterback you transpose them on the vikings vikings are probably the favorite in the nfc period you know this success this season i don't know how they don't resign darnold next year and have jj mccarthy kind of sit if they're going to sit him because he's had Sam success and I, and 40 million dollars after a season like this yeah, somewhere no, else. and uh, no. yeah i don't know if they're going to pay him but we'll see i you know it's it's kind of like that it's it's like 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 we're almost said you know are the older veteran quarterbacks that the game kind of slows down for him I think that's kind of what Sam Donald is is he's had plenty of years in the NFL it's he's kind of slowed down Justin for him Jefferson. and he's got Justin more than he's got the best yeah. wide receiver in football Dude. to throw the ball to um cool. yeah Cleveland's I did not see them Deshaun Watson assassinated and sign Sam Donald like that's what's gonna happen you know Sam Donald's not about to win you a Super Bowl. No, I really don't think so. So, no. so you're gonna. I agree, yeah. and that's why I thought the Vikings were going to be the worst team in our division. But yeah, but like we look, I, I remember the Patriots. They didn't have one first round on their offensive line, yet their offensive line was just fine, right? I look at, and they're drafting at the back end of the draft of year. Hell, they're even trading back. That first pick isn't until the second or third round some years, and it's fine. Sometimes it's not the talent; it's the position you. Pl- Everybody's talented. It's the NFL. It's the position right. you put these guys in to have success, and that falls on coaching. So there, there is guys out there that can overcome bad coaching and things like that. You can never overcome bad talent, in my opinion. And and so at, at the end of the day, everyone's pretty good in this league, and the Vikings are using their guys right. That's why Sam Darnold looks the way he's looking right now. I don't think it's going to yeah. be something that takes you over the top. But like, well, yeah, you know, they're he coaching. Has, he has a month to make decisions back there. I mean, he's, he's picking and choosing. Who yeah, during the ball to. That's uh, what Craig's saying. During the game broadcast, they just said they're the only offensive line in the NFL where every single member was drafted by that team. Right. That's that's like unheard of. All yeah, five they're... starters are drafted by that homegrown talent team. Like that's not possible, and that's why it's just chemistry. It's time. It's great coaching. They know what they're looking for. They take this guy and just like the Patriots and what Paulie said, that was the Patriot way. You don't need to be the best at everything, but the things that we do well, the two or three things, you better be excellent at them. And that's what the Vikings are doing. Yeah, that's why the San Francisco 49ers have success with Brock Purdy. 
That's why the Patriots, the, Tom Brady was a seventh round pick. Like when you have a lot going on around you, that's right. It's a lot easier. Right. And right. so Sam Darnold's not a bad quarterback by any means. He's probably in the best situation of his career right now, though. So, yeah, it's rough because, you know, I don't know. For us as Bears fans, like, we're looking at it as, you know, so are we just wasting our time here? Because we could upgrade in the, in the coaching area. And me and David both wish they would have because should have last these year, other think, stabs. But... Yeah, like um, LaFleur. Um, I, I don't like Campbell so much, but I love Ben Johnson, uh, Kevin O'Connell with the Vikings. Like these are all legitimate, very well run organizations right now. And we had to replace both an offensive and defensive coordinator last year. And we're looking at it like, oh, it's supposed to be fine. Like, I, I don't know. It, to me, it's just, I really wish things would have gone a little bit different. And uh, yeah, I think the bears are going to have to depend on Caleb being good enough to overcome that stuff. If they're going to have success, because I don't think they're necessarily going to do them many favors. Like the Vikings would have for JJ McCarthy. David actually said that to me the other day. He's like, you want to get scared? Remember they got a a quarterback here that's supposed to be here for the next 10 years. Imagine what that's going to look like once they have him. And then yeah, that might be the stuff that puts you a little bit over the top, but yeah, I mean, they're playing well. They're doing well. Unfortunately. All right, Craig. Ryan, I do want to. The... I do want to hear your points. Can I give you one point that I thought of, like the takeaways from the week? Yeah, I'll yeah. Give you Go one, ahead. Just quick one comment. No, you're good. There will never ever be an zero seventeen in football ever again. Oh, I thought there was going to be two of them this year, and they, you know. So I think you're right. It's never going to yeah. happen ever again. That's just a funny little takeaway I had from the league this year. Yeah, it, this year has been. And we say this kind of every year. It's, it's been wacky. And then it, you look at, you know, we'll say the same thing next year. All these things we try and sit here and predict on the show. And it's like complete opposite. And you're going, well, this is why we love football. Craig, what's the takeaway you, you took away from week five? Uh, that we can halt the uh, apology train through uh, Buffalo. Um, <laughs> because uh, as they started out real well, um, they've looked very mediocre and and he struggled to get the ball to these new guys um and and didn't look as well as as over the last two weeks when when he started to play some some, some better legit, defenses yeah. um and and you know uh probably should have left that football game as his head bounced off the turf and he was unconscious for a few <laughs> he looked like um, two of there for a second yeah uh there's zero chance he should have been back in that football game so um, I, I think that division is wide open and, and um, where we thought Buffalo, I think Buffalo is closer to what we thought they were than, than what they showed the first few weeks. Yeah. Cause me and Craig were like, this is the year they implode. He's got no wide receivers. And then the key comes out on fire, Josh Allen. And I'm like, well, let's see. But I, you know, I, I, I agree. I don't think the verdict's out just yet, but the, the, he looked bad against the Ravens and, and they didn't even take him into the blue tent to check him. They, they weren't even going to take him to concussion protocol. And they, they called down and said, hey, get him to the tent, you idiots. Yeah. Like, he he, he and, was and, unconscious and he on the ground. And Trubisky go in the game, and he's like, ah, no. Yeah. Get, get me happened. out of this tent. Yeah. And, that was and crazy. they run the football once with Trubisky, and he comes running back on the field. Um, I got a takeaway is the Steelers need to see what Russell Wilson has because – Justin Fields is not good at quarterback. And I think if Justin Fields is a better quarterback, then they beat the Cowboys the other night. Um, if a defense if if their defense allows more than 20 points in a game, Justin Fields is two and twenty-eight. That is terrible. He's not consistent. He's a little more accurate. And I think that's probably due to coaching and, ma- and making him feel a little more comfortable this season than he was in Chicago. But if they're just sitting Russell because they haven't lost too many games with Justin Fields, I think it's I think they're pretenders. I think it's just a matter of time before they start going downhill, and they need to see what Russell Wilson has because, like I said, they beat Dallas the other night. Dallas and and I don't know what y'all's take. And Craig and and Ryan was waiting for this debate because Ryan and a lot of people in the Metroplex here were thinking this was such a heroic win. I'm like, what? Dak Prescott had two terrible interceptions, a fumble. Um, if he doesn't dive on the football and then when they fumbled it at the one yard line, you don't win that football game. There was a lot that Justin Fields left on the table 
and I don't think you win this game if 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 he plays better. But well, I don't know. I, I Hang the hat on on this win. win. From I'm the like standpoint of your your medical list is longer than your starter list, and and so it, right now you didn't think if you lose Lawrence and you lose Parsons and you lose um, Cooks and and you know all these guys. You you uh, against a very good defensive team in in Pittsburgh with a two and a half hour delay, you know of of deal. Um, you you just didn't know what to expect. But um, you know, yeah, I mean Dak makes some throws that are questionable at times, but he also comes back. And that drive, he, the final drive was impressive. But right. I was like, where is this the whole game? What do we? I mean, I don't know. If it wins, a uh, win. But yeah. to me, it wasn't that. Yeah, I mean the true when test you hang right your hat on and be, say the true test to tell you where you stand is going to be the next two weeks against if they can if they can keep either game even if they lose if they can keep both games close then then um, that'll be impressive with with the the injuries they have. Dave, what what is your uh, your take on Justin Fields? Because I I know I don't know what you thought about him when you had him or. I mean, do you like um, as a quarterback? Super realistic. I've always been super realistic with Justin Fields. It was just like a, it was a good time to move on. Um, I didn't want to waste any more time proving his mediocrity. I think he's just slightly better, Daniel Jones. Like, I mean, I always looked at him like that. Like, um, good, decent, better speed, slightly better arm in terms of processing speed. I mean, I see the exact same stuff in Chicago. And I remember everybody just making excuses for him while he was here and. At one point, they were like, well, wait, wait till you see him behind a better line or with better receivers. And I was like, what if this is just who this guy is? Yeah. I was right. like, what if he's just going to always get sacked, hold on to the ball slightly too long, miss open yeah. guys, never get to second reads, be really you got fast. Him DJ Moore, when you got him DJ Moore, I thought maybe that would help. And, and when it didn't, I'm like, okay. Well, and that's the I thing, mean, too. The, if, the Darnell if, Mooney, the Darnell Mooney's really the end of the sentence right there, right? Like, oh, he had no weapons here forever. And now Darnell Mooney has 130 yards and two touchdowns with Kirk Cousins, for Christ's sake. I mean, yeah, right. this is like end of the story right there. So um, I think I feel bad for Pittsburgh because I, I've always loved Mike Tomlin. It's been always like a wet dream of mine, just like somehow Mag Tomlin quits and joins the Bears. Right. Um, but uh, I, do, I, I feel bad for them because they just deserve – a slightly better quarterback to just go 10 wins every season. And it's like all they're ever missing. And I don't know how they always just miss it by this much. So I, I feel bad for him. And Justin Fields is just another example. I sure hope they're not foolish enough to pay him 40 to $45 million for the next three years. They would be, I don't think they will be stupid. But that's, and, but that's and, what and Justin like Fields said, is worth. I mean, if, he's $40 if, million dollar quarterback. Like I said, I don't know if they're holding Russell Wilson. Is he still injured? What are they doing? But, um, you got to see what you have in him, I think, and I don't think you have much if you're looking at what he did with the Denver Broncos and how bad he was there, but and how quick he fell off. But um. I'm not too worried about their situation personally because um, Russell Wilson, it, it, he's shown throughout his career he is clutch. He can win you a game. He can win you a game in the playoffs. He's won Super Bowls. He's got some kind of resume, right? So if they're what. They're not doing absolutely terrible with Justin Fields. So, yeah, give Russell time, get healthy, and then come in here and ride this ship out at the end. I mean, that's something that Russell can do. To survive a whole season's rough. And, uh, and yeah, Fields isn't it. But they've been able to win with him a little bit, right? So, I don't know. They're in a very weird situation. I mean, that's why they traded a sixth-round pick for him at the end of the yeah. day, right? So what are your expectations from a quarterback that you traded a sixth-round pick for? Well, I mean, they got a couple wins. It's not bad. So so the result of that has been, I don't know, their value that they got in return has probably been adequate. And um, we as Bears fans, we've seen Justin Fields for a long time. We know that he's his biggest problem is consistency. He's a very flashy player. I would feel much better uh, about him being in a situation where he's like the backup to Lamar Jackson. If you needed him for a game, even in the playoffs, like he could come in and win you a game. Is he going to do it every week? No, he's not. So I yeah, he, he got he he uh, got hit pretty good. They they had to take him out for a play and uh, check him for a concussion. 
and the and, the the backup throws a 19 yard dart down the field. I was like, keep him in. Let's see what he's got. And I was gonna say, if I'm, in, I'm like, if I'm not mistaken, Russell Wilson had 27 touchdowns, nine interceptions last season with um, Denver, and that was on Denver. If yeah. that's what you get for like eight games, let's cut that in half and give you 14 and five. Pittsburgh's on, in a much better situation with Russell Wilson than they are with Justin Fields. Yeah, and they're asking him to do a lot less. I mean, at, at the point where he is in his career, to be able to play a half a season, I mean, I don't know. And you guys defense. like taking half days at work? <laughs> it's nice. It's <laughs> yeah. nice. Justin's yeah. getting you 17 points per game. Russell Wilson's probably getting you 23. So, I mean, it's an upgrade. It's the cheapest quarterback room in football, though. Yeah. Good for them. They They, they played it right. I think it's just unfortunate. You got any more takes takeaways, Craig, from this week? Uh, I mean, I think we've covered a lot of them. I mean, Dallas, yeah, covered. you know, is injured, and and maybe you might want to look uh, at San Francisco and see, you know, is is McCaffrey really the the oil that makes that thing run? Because to lose to Arizona the way they did. Um, that's a painful loss. That division is kind of um, all stacked together when I thought the 49ers would kind of run away and hide. Um, so, I mean, maybe it's McCaffrey, but. Um, you know, they're they're kind of an annoying was, team because, like, yeah, they do good most every year, and they're struggling a little bit now. And, and look, the Cardinals are, divi- you know, division team, but you know in the playoffs they're going to turn it on and they'll be in the yeah, NFC but I mean, they had a game double again, digit lead in the fourth quarter and they lose it to Arizona, you know. I mean, I, you know, yeah. so I don't know. Was Christian McCaffrey ever really the the thing that made that thing run? Like we we yeah, knew I didn't he was think the sprinkles so. on top, but like, like the year before what we got thought, there yeah. Raheem Mostert I remember right. Raheem Mostert was the best they back can in football. That throw season. anybody so back there like, and they uh, get 200 uh, yards. Uh, and, going, but oh, but wow. when but when I mean the offense just seems to have something missing this year that it you know and I don't know maybe they're figuring out Brock Purdy I don't know um, I haven't watched a, a full 49ers game I'm I'm watching you know the the red zone and getting bits and pieces of it. This um, is also part of my wet dream fantasies. I think. The way that the NFL works and the only time NFL coaches are really let go is like really bad or the Niners. It's stagnation. Right. right. And these teams just get Harbaugh, sick. Harbaugh goes to they almost NFC get sick of each other. Right. You know, like this, I think the Niners, I think there's like, you, you talked about the Jets having bad chemistry. I want to say, I think the Niners are starting to exhibit some signs of like bad chemistry and i think everybody's just kind of sick of seeing each other and not succeed like you put one super bowl on that team i think you're talking about a team that's probably a a lot better in the next like six years but i think them just like i i I was joking i I would be shocked if kyle shanahan was was like oh you know I know, and then he like yeah. joins the Bears next year. Wouldn't it be fucking crazy? Like, that'd be... oh, Caleb right, Williams, so let's, let's calm Caleb down there. Williams <laughs> would be Caleb Williams would be the happiest guy in the room. Well, um, it, it, it's, what's it's happening? that point. It's that point where, yeah, you're succeeding, but it's it's like we're mi- obviously missing something to get over the hump, and you know, um, I think you know the Falcons held on to their team too long, trying to make it back to the Super Bowl. Um, I'm thinking of a different team too. That is just the bills. I'm like, you're holding on a little bit too long. And at some point you got, I thought this was the year they're going to blow it up with the head coach. Um, and that could happen to Shannon. I don't, I don't think that it will, but that would be kind of, kind of interesting, but they're in the NFC championship game almost every year. But you wouldn't be shocked, which is part of the problem. Right. Yeah. so, So here's the thing. It's like the Eagles, Doug Peterson wins one three years later, he's fired. Yeah. Right, Doug so Peterson wouldn't so have why? came back and won that game Sunday. He'd have been not, he'd have been joining Robert Sala. He's yesterday. not a good coach. He's not a good coach. What's happening in the in San Francisco is the windows starting to close. You right. gambled a lot, like the Rams did it too, but they won one. As long as you win one, it's okay. They, they, Their yeah, shot they was in. last year, man. Right. They, overtime in the Super Bowl. That's what Christian McCaffrey is here for. Sure, you could put anybody in there and get two hundred yards during the regular season. When it matters most, who showed up in the Super Bowl? Yeah. Christian McCaffrey. That's yeah. why you got him here. But you still couldn't do it. That's what's going to hurt him the most. So now this window is going to close. You're going to have to retool, rebuild this thing. Um, it's going to take some time, and a lot of organizations get frustrated. However, he is a good damn coach. 
If, they're about if to I was them, I would Brock stick Purdy. it out with him and through so, all of it. But I would, I would too, honestly. He's a dang I'm good. Coach. Agree, but you know, it's part of my thing too. Is that, and then you, you read these off-season reports about the ownership groups in San Francisco getting very frustrated with John Lynch and and Kyle Shanahan about how much money they keep insisting they need to spend, right? And they're like, no, but we need to pay. If you look at it, and they showed this, I think in week one or week two, I was watching a game where they showed each position. And the what what ranking they are paying that player first, position first, group? First, first, it was first. just like first, second, first, yep. first, first, second, first, first, and that's just like not sustainable. Well, no. that's what you I'm know, saying. They last gambled. night I was joking. They went all with, in. They were they joke. Yeah, but I was joking with Polly. Like these guys went to like three out of four Super Bowls, if I'm not mistaken. Almost yeah. four, like five NFC championships. Guys, if uh, we're as Bears fans in Buffalo in the '90s, if you went to four straight Super Bowls and lost, you'd have to move the team. Chicago wouldn't have to like, you, the fans wouldn't tolerate like you'd get so frustrated this you'd city have to move the team. Luckily, yeah, the city would burn. But like it's San Francisco, you can kind of get away with it with for yeah, a lot like, of reasons. It's beautiful, good. it's California. We're still San Francisco. We're the still baseball the Niners, team was winning. For God's sakes. But they're also still the Niners, right? Like they have so much to fall back on for being the Niners. And it's just right. this like professional yeah. organization. It's kind of the Cowboys way almost too, Craig. I think they're riding their coattails right. a little too oh, hard, just like the Bears about are. The 90s. Oh, the Bears. We we have 85 Bears celebrations every year. It's it's idiotic. <laughs> um, and like, oh, so that's funny, Brian. Right. The 90s. That's, that's funny. funny. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, um, that is so funny. Get on Saturday night. Yeah, no, Rex Grossman you know. and Aaron Rodgers have the same amount of Super Bowl appearances, but um, right. you know, um, oh, yeah, no, and and and, no, and just, now look, I know it's not a it's not I can't, a we can't do I, it, we, we can't do Dave, it. We know, Brian, we can't do it. We know, we're just fucking with <laughs> we you. Joke. We can't, we yeah. can't. No, well, Dave, Dave, you know, I, I'm a very realistic fan, I'm not, I'm not a Aaron Rodgers lover or whatever you want to call it. Um, at the end they of his call career, it, call it being a homer, but homer, whatever. Um, at the end of his career, he cost us chances to go to the Super Bowl. He cost us NFC Championship games. So I, I'm not going to sit here and be like, "Oh, Aaron Rodgers did everything." You know, no, he cost us some games. All right, and I'm not going to pity party is, you here. Like I take so, ten, yeah. Aaron Rod- he, ten years he, of Aaron Rodgers. So, uh, let's, let's you guys oh, cost yeah. him too. Oh yeah. Oh say, no, as, as being <laughs> one of the best being quarterbacks very... of all time. <laughs> yeah. It's being We're a very hall hall so, it was so hard, guys. You have no idea how hard yeah. it was on me. No, it, it, that guy. It was great, and you know, it was great. It was a great time. But I'm just saying, it. I will. Yeah. I will. No. Say that we he caused it some too. But, but that's why we're we're anyways. literally hoping, like right now, as Bears fans, and that's why we can go back on the Bears if you want to. But like, we not said really, how but... mad how mad we are about this coaching staff not being changed over, and we're hoping for an Aaron Rodgers, Joe Philman type situation, where Aaron Rodgers is overcoming Joe Philman. And as Mike to, McCarthy, like that's what Craig's Mike hoping McCarthy. for with Dak Prescott. Yeah, he, he dragged Mike like, McCarthy. Like Dak Prescott has to just that's what overcome the hurdles of Mike right. McCarthy. Oh, and Jerry Jones, he's got two hurdles. It's the only way, yeah. yeah. You know, you you say Jerry Jones says all in. Well, the 49ers are all in, and Jerry Jones just said it so people would turn on the TV. I mean, that's the difference. Because in his mind, he goes like, "Me and the Niners, we're the same." Yeah. You're not on the same. Yeah. Like you're not we're, even in the same. We're the ballpark. same as the Chiefs. Not even close to being yeah. as good because as the Chiefs. He convinced still has, himself that he though. still has one less yeah. Super Bowl than Pittsburgh, and you know, and and you know, I mean, he's just he's living in the past, and and he he all While he, he wants in Johnny all Walker he wants Blue. is is he wants to win one without Jimmy Johnson. Say did it. He'll walk away at that point in time and go away into the sunset and turn things over. But the problem is. <laughs> The yeah. problem 35 is, years is, later. <laughs> well, yeah, but the problem is he's turning the organization over to Steven, who's he's him. Not any better. So, it, yeah. it, it, you know, it, 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 until boy. they sell the team, it, it's never. Well, you know what's gonna... crazy, Craig? Because we talked about the Dalvin Cook thing, and I heard McCarthy on, on, on 105.3 The Fan. They asked him straight up about Dalvin Cook, and he said, he said, <laughs> Julio says this is our year. He said, uh, um, he said the other running backs haven't done anything to lose their spot. I'm like, but he's still you, better you mean, you than what you got. A, you mean not have 100 yards in five games? Yeah. Dak, I mean, it's, what has Zeke Elliott done? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Uh, I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think Ezekiel Elliott has 20 carries this year. 
Yeah. And your head coach was mad because they didn't go get Zeke earlier. That's, that's how delusional that and I actually, coach McCarthy. I want to it's bring like the guy who earlier. has a car that starts and, with like the magic turn and you pound and, it like three times and, and then it starts. When you like, should have dude, used Zeke the most on fine. the one yard line, you use Dowdle and you fumble and you the fumble football the and, and you almost lose the game. Yeah, absolutely maddening. Yeah, and, and like, you know, it was interesting. I was on vacation for the last two weeks, so I got to kind of take a step back and look at it like a little bit unplugged, not into it every week and just kind of get a broader view. And it's just, you know, the conclusion I've come up with, it's like what what, what the Rams did, the Rams really, they, they won a Super Bowl because the Bengals happened to knock the Chiefs out that year. That's the Chiefs kryptonite is the Bengals. Right. And then and then the Bengals are a much beatable, more beatable team. But you saw how they had to gamble and go all in. The 49ers, same thing. Gamble, go all in just to try and beat this guy. Meanwhile, Brian, earlier in the show, you were saying that the Chiefs are not good this year. And they're still 5-0. and oh. Yeah. <laughs> we have the yeah. best quarterback in the league paired up with a really damn good coach. Mm-hmm. And with, we're kind of and it's referees making very close. Oh, yeah, the referees. It's everybody game. against Absolutely them, crazy. guys. They were not that good last year either. Yeah, we said that last year. They're not that good. They're not going to win. No. They're going to win it, and it's maddening. It's 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 and and look, he hasn't been that They're good. This, the that team. great this they year. Get, they, but... they they and I guess and I guess the back to back Super Bowl champions can can get those calls. Yeah, but well, let's you know, let's let's you know you said this teams let's. It's it's an hour and twenty minutes into the show, which Sorry. is fantastic. Yeah, we gotta, no, we you're gotta good. Here, so. well, let's do our top five power rankings real quick, if, if you guys have time for that. Um, yeah, I wrote mine down at the beginning. So, all right. Well, then we'll start with you, Dave. So let's go five to one. Who do we got? Who's your number five? Uh, five. It was hard. I was honestly hard to get five in. I, I have no idea. The it's such a log jam. Um, I got like a three-way tie, I guess, but I'll give you the top two. Um, Vikings, because they're proving it, and San Fran for like the opposite reasons. I just believe that at the end of the year, they're going to still be there and they get healthy. Um, I don't I don't feel good about five at all. I feel good about four through one. Yeah. Greg, who's your number five team? Yeah, Minnesota, with what they struggled against, I understand the Jets are good defensively. I understand they had to go to the other side of the world to play football, but but they look like a much more um, beatable, down-to-earth team like we kind of thought they would be. Um, but they're still 5-0, and so you still got to give them their credit. To, they, they've played who's in front of them. They've won all the games. Darnold right now is the leader in the MVP, which I don't understand that those words would ever come out of my mouth. Give me but, that bet at the beginning um, of the year. <laughs> oh, I, oh I, if somebody if somebody bet that they are they are going to be rich. trying to get to wake eight, week week. They 18. need to call the hotline. That yeah, they yeah, you'd be inviting us to your studio. <laughs> Paul, uh, yeah, right, Paul. Who do you who do you got at five? I'll still take Tampa. I still think the arrows pointing up. I like the division. I think uh, you know they made it far into the playoffs last year. I think Mayfield's in a really good spot, and I and think they should have won that game right. last week. Yeah, I'll take Tampa Maybe. at five. I got the Texans at five. Good defense. I think CJ Stroud hasn't been as good as he was last year. The book's out on him. He's, you know, he's having to play a little bit through through the tape, uh, the sophomore slump, but he's still playing good and they're and they're still winning a football game. So I got Texans at five. Dave, who do you got? At four. Um yeah, I was gonna say the the my four are just the most complete teams. So four I got Houston. For the same reasons you did. I just think they're complete. CJ Stroud's not going to be bad. He's not maybe going to be like MVP caliber. Maybe at some points he will be, but they still have good receivers, good running backs, good offensive line, solid, solid defense. Uh, One part of their defense is exceptional, and it's like defensive end play. And I think you need like one part of your defense to be exceptional in the playoffs to make a difference. And their cornerbacks are super, super solid, and they're – and they have an elite coach, good. and yeah. they have an elite, elite coach. So, yeah, they're super complete. Greg, who's your number four, bud? Uh, the same with the Texans. I, I just um, – I like that move to hire that coach when they hired him. Um, I, thought it was a, I thought it was a, a, a great hire. Um, I like what he did in San Francisco, and um, I did not think – 
this was kind of more the version of Stroud that I thought you would see. Um, but but he's still not, you know, he's still not like like get him out of there bad. Like he's still he's still very serviceable, and and I mean he he gets the gets it done in overtime and gets them the win, and and um, that's a huge win for him. So yeah, I get you know, and that defense is just brutal. Oh, yeah. All right, Paul. Number four. Yeah, number four. I mean, I'm gonna jump on the wagon, Houston. So, for the reasons you guys both said, I don't really have anything to add. My number four is the Ravens. Good defense. They they played a good game against the Bengals. That was a shootout. The Bengals should have won that game. They 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 Bengals found just a way. Find ways to lose. Games. They found a way to lose it. Um, they're good. I mean, Lamar's playing really good right now. Defense is really good. I got the Ravens there. Dave, number three. Um, three, I think Detroit still deserves to be top five and top three. I think they are winning in the weakest part of their season. If I'm being honest, I think this, I don't think they're going to get worse than this. Um, everything is the same and consistent. I don't think what makes them good are things that are flash in the pan and then drop off. I think it's going to be the same type of team every week. And those type of teams beat up on teams. And at the end of the season, those teams are probably going to be, unless they're just like tired by the end of the season, because they've been playing so many games over the last like two, three years and like playoffs and playing so physical. Um, I don't see this team like dropping off much. I don't see them maybe necessarily being Super Bowl ready. I'm not saying that my Super Bowl pick, but I don't see them dropping off much and they'll be 10, 11, 12 wins by the end of the season. I think like no problem. I got the Lions here too. Go ahead, jump in on that. I got them here too. They they they're they're really consistent. You're 100 percent right, and they play all three phases really good. The defense is good. Their offense is good. Golf. I gave them a lot of credit last year for the year he had, and they're good special teams. So, and I really like both. I like their coach staff. I do like Dan Campbell, and I and Ben Johnson's a beast. So, Paul, who do you got at number three? I got the Bengals. I think. Uh... They're scheduling the Get next the couple weeks. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> One and four, Bengals? Yeah, I, I think they're scheduling the next four weeks. It's all going to be victories. So I think we're going to be talking about a five and four Bengals team. Well, if and you call I, that, well, well, I'll, you know, we'll have you have to I just, back on I the just think, man, I value the quarterback position highly, and Joe Burrow still playing very well. I think I, over I the course of that, time, it pans out. So, yeah. I, I, I thought that's that what, two weeks ago, and they lost both those games. I, After I, I scoring 105 points, so yeah. Well, well, Paul, my I had a takeaway I didn't put in there because we were we talked about some other breaking news, but Burrow is so good. I'm I'm asking myself at one and four, are we counting them out? So I will yeah, say not, that, but I'm not giving my top five. But that's that's a hot take. I, I love it, Paul. I love it, Paul. Yeah. Greg, who's your yeah, number no, three? I, I I have Detroit. Um, I I just their consistency offense seems to find different ways to score um the defense is is um playing well and and like i said i think with dallas's worst attribute stopping the run i think david montgomery if anybody has david montgomery in fantasy football you should put him in try to put him in twice because he's going to have about four thousand yards in uh sunday's game all right dave What's your number two, bud? Um, I'm going to go with Kansas City. Um, I like them. I don't love them this year, but, I mean, we say that every year. And for whatever <laughs> reason, like, yeah. I don't know, it's referees, it's Patrick Mahomes magic. It's, I don't know, there's, like, a weird air around them that you have to, like, like them. And they also win in similar ways to Detroit. It was, like, kind of right. when Craig final like, wrapped up his point against Detroit. He's saying, you know, they find different ways to win. Like, that's what I love about good football teams. They're just, like, creative, and they just yeah. figure out a way to beat the matchup that week. And that's kind of just what Kansas City will always do. At the end of the day, I think if everybody comes back and is healthy, they are super talented on offense. Um, but if they're not, I don't think it's enough to get them over the hump, but we said that again last year. And I don't think the defense um, – upgraded as much as everybody thought they would and i think that defense took a downturn and that chris jones is a year older 
So if something fails in the playoffs, I think it might be the defense because that is the only thing on this team that actually took a noticeable dip. And they lost a really good quarterback, right? What yeah, they lost um, Legereus Sneed to Tennessee. Yeah. They had to trade him away because they couldn't pay him. Um, but I just there's no like exceptional players on their defense other than Chris Jones, and he's 32. And uh, if something fails in the and that's what carried them to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and go next as the Chiefs are my number two. You know, it's funny because I uh, really like talk. explaining how number two team is like not the best. Oh. Um, they, right. But like, yeah, that that's, there, yeah, that's that's. I, was, weird. I thought that's... you stopped talking. That's why I was talking. Oh no, I'm sorry. So I was just that... saying like we're, no, I'm finding good. ways to complain about the number two best team in the NFL, right? Yeah. So it's like it's whatever. Yeah. They're still sick. They're still super complete. They're coached. Same thing. And I, and this is one of those things that I've noticed. And me and Paul talked about this yesterday. I think we're gonna start making a little theory when you have two head coaches on your staff you're just going to be really really good <laughs> right um i got the chiefs here too like i you know i talked about how patch mom isn't playing all that well and this and that but i said it last year they won the super bowl so still a team you gotta you know they're the best team of well one of the best teams of football and they're probably going to be in the championship again so paul let's go with you this time what's your number two team uh lamar jackson and the ravens yeah, I just think, um, like, as, you know, it's funny because you could probably take my top five teams and it would probably mimic what I think the top five quarterbacks are right now. So, yeah, yeah. it's just, man, they're still they're still rocking and rolling, kicking. So I think they're a really damn good team. And until they prove otherwise to me, um, yeah, they're number two in my book. All right, Craig, who do you got? Um, I had already... So you want one number two? Who's your number yeah. two? Lion. I mean, uh, Chiefs. I mean, Chiefs. I had already okay. said. You. I okay, so yeah. I did not hear that. My bad. Um, all right, yeah, Craig, give me your number one then. Well, it's got to be Baltimore. They've played better after a terrible start. Um, they they Lamar's look better. The defenses look better. Um, I think they have uh uh schedule gets easier from here for a little while in playing Washington. I, I think they roll through Washington. Um, and, and um, I, I think that win Sunday was a huge win because you let the Bengals right back in the division and, and everything. If you lose that football game, that makes everything a lot tighter. So now you have a head to head and, and, you know, you've got some space between the Bengals who really probably are only your only threat in that division. Um, so, so yeah, I think that was a big win for him. All right, Dave, who's your number one, bud? Baltimore as well. Um, same thing, creative ways to win. They pass, they run, they play defense, they score on defense, they have good special teams. I don't know. I think I'm, they're, they might be more of a, a sucker for the moment type number one pick, maybe for me and Craig. I think there's a few more gaps in their team than I want to think about, right. but their last three weeks have been just so good that it's better than everyone else's three weeks. Like if you present the best three weeks from each team on our list so far, Baltimore's best three weeks has been better than anyone else's by far. So maybe it's just like a, a timing issue thing for me. Um, but if the Baltimore Ravens can present these last three weeks like somewhere in the playoffs, I don't think anyone else on our lists are stopping them. So that's where I'm kind of like, you know, you, there's just no thing. If anybody else brings up the Bengals one more time in this goddamn episode, I'm going to lose my mind. I don't want to hear one more thing about the Bengals. Who is, what, who's paying you people? <laughs> Team hey, that, sucks. Hey, that was Paul, not not yeah. me. I, I, I just, just mentioned like... that they're the only competition in the division. They have the second <laughs> overall draft pick right now. <laughs> It'll That's change. Just... I'm losing my mind. They should have won that game, and, and they just choked it away. But I digress. I got no, you know. No, you I'm talk joking. about being a sucker for the moment. I got Minnesota number one. They're five and zero. Oh. They're playing really good right now. They look. They beat barely beat the Packers, but hanging on. It's a divisional game. They're tougher. They they played a tough defense in London. They beat the Jets. So they're 5-0. I got to give them their props. I had them in the top five last week. They continue to win. 
So I got to have him here. And I don't think that's, I think the worst pick is so far the Bengals for Paul there in the top five. But go ahead, Paul. What is your number one? Yeah, it's the thing though. Like I was uh, debating whether Minnesota should be number five over Tampa for me. And it's, it's because when I do my rankings, I try not to pay so much attention to the record when it's so early on. Right. Um, and, and like I said, the Bengals can bounce back just fine and wind up finishing the season better off than maybe the Vikings can. So we'll see what happens. It's a long year and it, it happens every year, but over the course of time, certain things tend to pan out. The Bengals have just had bad luck. The Vikings have had really good luck, but number one for me is the chiefs. I mean, until we beat them, until somebody out there goes out and beat them. And the only team that has been able to do it has been the Bengals really. Right. And even when they play them this year, they still had a really close game with them in what week two. So yeah, the Chiefs are on top. Um, Matt uh, Patrick Mahomes is like the Michael Jordan of football, in my opinion. So it's kind of weird being like, oh, Michael Jordan had a bad game. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Like, could you imagine criticizing him? No, I, I can't. And that's what's going on with the Chiefs right now. Like, every team's going to have its slumps, ups and downs, this and that. Overall, they get it done. They get it done every time. The only time they have lost the Super Bowl was to Tom Brady. The other Michael Jordan of football. So, yeah, I, to me, it's it's hands down the Chiefs. No questions asked. So, All right. Well, it's been an interesting show. You guys, um, thanks for jumping on. And uh, the more the merrier. Paul asked yeah. me if you could jump on. David said, no more the merrier. I love to talk football and the sports. The, 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 the show goes, you know, a lot longer. But, you know, that's okay. Yeah, sorry yeah, about that. Definitely. Thank you. Have to get up an hour and a half. Yeah, Craig's got to go to work at one a.m. Yeah. So uh, he's a little crazy. Sorry, Craig. Craig. <laughs> uh, sorry. I appreciate you guys having me on. Hopefully, I wasn't like. Uh, of course. This is just me doing my football shtick. So. No, you're fine. Uh, we love to talk sports. Um, we got to return the favor and have you guys come on with us at some point too. So, you know. Definitely. Definitely will do. Um, yeah, we just like talk. We like to talk sports. So you know, we we could you know continue going on after football um but but it's a good time you got you got you got hockey you got mlb playoffs you got football you've got basketball you know preseason so it's uh it's a good time good time of year baseball sports fans to me it's depressing right now if you guys want to mention the, the fact that it's like probably la and new york is just the lamest thing I was going to say, end the show. Fernando Tatis is my hero, so L.A. is about on the brink of elimination. Yeah, but even then, it's still San Diego, and I'm just like, right. California, New York don't deserve championships ever. Well, I, honestly, I hope Detroit ru- somehow rubs magic and, and rides that, but I don't know. We'll see. I was hoping the Detroit, Phillies won it, but, they're, but in trouble. they're in trouble. They they choke it away again, the, the, the New York Mets. like. How are you that they've talent all over the board and they continue they they somehow don't show up in the playoffs? But hey, it sounds like the Cowboys. <laughs> Last shot there, Craig. Sorry. All right, guys. Well, that is the one episode. More shot. One <laughs> more go shot. ahead. One more shot. You know, uh, it was funny because uh, um, you were telling me about how many regular season wins Dak Prescott has and this and that. But like at the end of the day, we're in the same boat. Like, how many playoff wins have you guys won? How many have we won? That's that's what matters. So if you don't show up in the playoffs, man. But but I see, he shows up this. in the playoffs. It's I mean, again, he didn't let he up. He didn't 42. show up in the in the playoff game last year. He had interceptions. He had, he had an interception. And he and, got and, most and, of his, and it was because he was down and it was because he was down a thousand trying to bring him back. And he got he got most of his stuff during our okay. we put our backup defense in there and almost let you guys come back and we're like, all right, let's put it into this. Have a good so. night, guys. <laughs> Anyways. All right, guys. That's the episode tonight. God bless and remember. Keep it up, folks. Take care.